So I met Cody when I was 18 years old. We went to the same high school, but he was two grades ahead of me and we just, you know, never met until that time. At first, I didn't really think nothing of him. I just thought he was very nice though. And then we saw each other again at a Halloween party. I was a little German girl looking all sexy with my little braids. And what was, I think Cody just wore a wig. Like he wasn't really dressed up, but he had some, maybe like an Afro wig or something. And actually there was this really creepy guy at the party dressed as a priest who was a lot older than me. And he just kept staring at me and trying to talk with me. And it was, it was just gross. It was just creeping me out how he would just stare. I'm like, ew, go away. So anyway, so I actually went up to Cody in front of that guy that was dressed up as a priest and I said, oh, there you are, honey. And I gave him a kiss on the cheek and I just whispered in his ear. I'm like, just pretend like you're my boyfriend. <laughs> but when I first met him, you know, he told me he worked in the car business. He, you know, worked with his dad. They sold cars, but he told me pretty soon into it that his real passion was bass fishing. And he told me I've kind of gotten out of it, but I miss it and I think I should get back into it. And so I said, yeah, if that's what you really love and that's your dream, you know, you've got to at least try it. Otherwise, you'll regret it for the rest of your life if you don't. So I just talk to him. I try to be a motivational speaker. I think that's my job as a wife and to be on the phone. I try to motivate him and, you know, pump him up. And I know I tell him all the time, I go, I have a really good feeling that you're going to do really good in this event. Like, I'm thinking, I don't know, I'm just picturing like a top 10 and seeing it. And he goes, really? And I really, I don't even really have feelings or, but I kind of want Cody to think that I'm sort of psychic. And then sure enough, like he'll usually do good. So then he, he kind of believes that I have this power or, you know, and I try to tell him a lot, just have fun. There's no pressure. Just, it's just you and the fish. Two ways I know you're from Alabama. Okay? One, your accent. Yeah. I can barely understand it. Two, uh -huh. you got cowboy boots by your bed, dude. <laughs> Definitely from the hills. Honestly. I don't know. They're not cowboys. <laughs> what are they? Boots. They're just boots. They're boots. <laughs> are you a farmer? No, they're waterproof. That's what I wear when it rains. They're like stylish waterproof boots? They're just boots. <laughs> Ah, here we go. Stop number three of the Walmart FLW Tour. It takes us back to Beaver Lake in Northwest Arkansas. It's a gorgeous place. We've been here a lot. And honestly, because it's in the Ozarks, it's one of the most scenic lakes we'll go to all season. And since we're very familiar with Beaver Lake, the cool thing about it is it always seems to be a different fishery every time we go, whether it's a time of year thing or weather conditions, it's almost a new lake from year to year. And this year, no exception. Uh, over the winter, they got a ton of rain down here and it has like three quarters of the lake dirty, which Beaver is usually pretty clear. You can see almost 20 feet down at the dam. Uh, not this time. A lot of dirty water, which means a lot of largemouths are going to be in play and we might see some of the best weights we've seen from Beaver Lake yet. So at this point, we have two tour events down and right now Cody's sitting 50th in the Angler of the Year standings. <laughs> 
Yeah, so freaking both tournaments this year, it seems like we're fishing around each other. Great minds think alike. Yeah, but every time I come <laughs> by and I'm like, what do you got? You're always like, Cody Meyer, 13 pounds, 6 ounces. Whatever. You do that crap tomorrow and you give me the thumbs down, you come in with 13 pounds, I'm going to kick your ass tomorrow. <laughs> He's got some ground to make up to get inside the top 35 in the points to make the Forest Wood Cup. And there's no doubt at Beaver Lake, he's going to have to start bailing some water out of this ship if, uh, if he wants it to start floating right again. So what's the weight where if you do this, it's ten good? Pounds. <laughs> 10 pounds plus? If, I, if you come by, you yeah. go like that? You got 10 pounds plus. All right. So anything other than 10 pounds, you can go. And if you give me a thumbs up and I'm the thumbs down, I'm going to warp around and talk to you. Right? <laughs> All right. Deal, man. Same thing. Yeah. So if I go by and you go like this, that means that if you go two thumbs, thumbs up, mega. you got... 13 plus. Yeah. Okay. Well, I got to drive. Well, you can take your hand off the wheel. It's a Ranger, dude. It's a Cadillac, baby. You can just real quick be like, right. so 13 plus, two thumbs, under 10, Damn. zero fish. <laughs> We're 147. All right. Out of right on now. Good luck. Fat little sucker. You know what? It's tiny, but it's number one. I'll take it right now. All right. Got your largemouth to smallmouth country. Number two. You know, it's funny, out of all the years of fishing down here, you always catch big smallmouth. Largemouth are pretty tough to come by, man, so definitely feel like that was a good bonus. I don't know where that's 12. So smallmouth is 15 inches, largemouth are 15, spots are 12. It's a keeper, but it's tiny. It'll definitely be the first one to go. So like this morning, you know, I had a couple 14 inch smallmouth. The first one, 14 and three quarter. I think probably weighed two pounds, but don't matter if you can't keep it. Eventually one's gonna be a good one. Yeah, we're just kind of looking for beds. And as you're looking, you're throwing out in front and most of these are smallmouth that are bedding. You just, you're landing it right on their bed. Little keeper, spotted bass. It's not what we're after, but you know what? I'm gonna take it right now. We can always call. This is the typical Beaver Lake grind right here. The Beaver Lake grind, right? Smallmouth could be number five. Oh yeah, now we can pull. <laughs> Slowly but surely. Got I know why it was so hard to catch. Half his lips ripped off. I had to resort to a little uh, Strike King fly here. It's like a little crappie jig. Pretty good sized coal there. Thank you, little spotted bass. When you're looking for bed, just cast out in front of you. And just like that, you got a bonus fish. Looking for beds and all of a sudden, <laughs> 
You know what we call that right there? A beaver lake special. It's always good when you're cold on a beaver. Oh yeah, that's not even close there. Yeah. That's it. See what I mean, that tricky sucker? Look at this. Look at this lip. That's why the little, little crappie jig came in handy there. Just tell them who you are while you're at it, man. I'm uh, Daniel Fennell. Ooh, no, you're not. <laughs> Here we go, man. Cody Meyer, he's one of the greatest guys in the world, so I've been told. Yeah, it's pretty much true. Everyone's out there having fun, catching fish. I don't know if we've ever seen the weights like this, so, you know, I think uh, you're gonna have to catch them every day to really to really compete. Man, it's gonna make for a heck of a fishing tournament. It's what it's gonna do. Here you go, Cody Meyer. Five bass limit today, sir. 12 pounds, 15 ounces, man. That is 25th place right now, but I guarantee you, you got guys right below you all the way down almost and above you the same way. Yeah, like I say, that's huge weight for here. So go out there tomorrow and uh, try to catch some big ones and, and make a move. Playing some cornhole, huh? Yeah. We don't really have this in California, man. Oh, yeah. You don't. Hey, I don't. I don't. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, that was. Sandbagging as usual. That was beginner's luck. How much weight do you have? Oh, seven pounds. <laughs> With day one in the books, Cody's sitting in 31st place, which on Beaver Lake is actually really good. Uh, the weights tend to get so stacked that if you can follow that up with another strong day tomorrow, there's a really good chance Cody could be fishing in the top 20 cut on day three. Good job. You too, buddy. Yeah. 12-15. Did the same. But they were 12-6. 12 12-6? 12 yeah. Dude, remember your post last year when yeah, we were here? The autocorrect? That was the funniest crap ever. <laughs> Just the, how it was worded. He caught a big striper. So I caught a striper, and that's about all I caught that day. So I posted it on Instagram, Facebook, and all that. And the way I worded it was, the strippers are chewing on beaver today. So autocorrect, but the strippers are chewing on beaver today. <laughs> This is a little rig I use when, you know, fish are uh, spawning. Right, when they're, when they're spawning, they're really, you know, they're not wanting to eat. So they're like really kind of short strike stuff. And so what I do is I'll tie a longer um, knot. Like, so this is a Palmar knot. I leave it longer tagged in, just like this here. So what you got here, your shaky head, you take your worm, thread it on just like normal, and then you take the, the tag end just like this and you just run it right down. You get it straight and you put it right in the tail. Just kind of like this here. I'm having a hard time, but just like that. What's going to happen is when these fish are spawning, like right now, a lot of times they're going to come up and they're just going to grab the tail just like that. You're gonna be going down the bank, you're gonna be looking for spawning beds, and you're gonna be you know, just kind of casting out as you're looking. So you're gonna land the shaky head right on their bed, and they're not hungry, they're not in, in any mood to feed, so they're just gonna protect their bed, and they're gonna come over and just barely grab the tail a lot of times. And so you'll set the hook and you'll miss them and think, oh, it's a little one. Well, a lot of times those are really big fish and have a little owner mosquito hook stinger in there. Now, when that fish bites down on that thing, you're gonna hook it. See how this this hook, you can put it weedless just like this so it can go through timber uh, structure and it's not gonna hang up. And when they you know, come up and bite the tail this time, they're gonna get hooked and you're gonna catch a ton more fish. I mean, in fact, one time I was fishing uh, Lake Shasta, Northern California Spotted Bass Lake. I hooked a fish, it was about a three and a half pounder. I fought it all the way around to the boat. It came up and it bit the front hook and it actually popped off and the stinger hook still caught it. It snagged it on, on the side of the face. So I actually caught that fish because of the stinger hook and it didn't even, you know, eat the stinger hook. It ate the whole worm. So just another thing. It can help you catch more, you know, more fish. And this has been a thing on the West that's, uh, you know, the locals are using and it's been a secret of ours. So there it is, guys. 
You want to see it? Yeah, I want to see it. Let me see it. Ten bucks. Listen, ten dollars, and I have something that will change your life forever. I'll just wait and watch it on there for free. Hey, it's gonna be past spawning when you see it. You can go out there and catch a mega bag tomorrow and be like, Yeah, that ten bucks was worth it. Considering I got so many megas on bed. Right all now. right, all right. Here it is. You know, That's clever. like our big spots. They'll do it at Smith too, this time of the year. They bite the tail. They bite the tail. Yep. You set the same, you do everything the same, the fish don't even know. What happened today? Happened today? <laughs> it would have been worth 10 bucks, dude, yesterday. Fourteen and a half. It's all of seven ounces. <laughs> A little spot's gonna look good with the four pounder. Yeah, no good for him either. Gonna fish in here a little bit longer than make a, uh, a total change, go up the lake, do something. Four. It ain't big, but right now it looks really pretty. <laughs> Every ounce counts towards the end of the year. That's what we're after right there. 
pole. Not much, but it's gonna help. Keep your small mouth. Iowa Pro, Cody Meyer from Auburn, California. 12 pounds, 15 ounces yesterday, Cody. And you got you a limit of bass today, brother. They got to weigh seven pounds and eight ounces to get into the top 20 buck well, knife. Won't be cut. a problem. Here we go. We'll no, enter. Look at that. 37. 39. 40. I saw it. <laughs> Here he goes. Let's see what we really got. Five in the bag today, Cody. Weighed 10 pounds, eight ounces. You're into 15th place right now, buddy. How'd it go? You know, it was a grind today. Beaver definitely, it always seems like day two is super, super tough, but uh, I was fortunate to catch five. You know, it uh, pretty much took me all day. I was fishing down by the dam, throwing a Strike King tube and a drop shot. Had a great time. I love coming here. I have to say happy birthday to my wife, Carrie, before I forget, because uh, I'd be in deep, deep trouble. You know, like I said earlier, Beaver Lake is different every year, and Cody just wasn't able to get dialed in. Uh, you know, on the right pattern or whatever it was, and he wound up falling down the leaderboard, finishing his tournament in 48th place. Fishing up the White River on Beaver is usually a pretty good way of getting a top 10, for sure, and there's no doubt the last few years we've, we've proven that. This year with the conditions, the dirty water is a little higher. Get in here! That means there's a lot of bushes and a lot of laydowns uh, that guys can go flip, and for a dude like Scott Canterbury, oh, yeah. who can pick up a jig, choke the Canterbury crawl, and start running a pattern, which Beaver's known for, you can just fish new water daily and, and catch good quality largemouth. Get in here. Boom! That's exactly what he did. He, he ran all up and down the White River. Get in here! Boom! Uh, anything that looked good, he could flip with the jig, he did. Get in here! And for a guy who's gotten second in so many tour events and even the Forestwood Cup. 17 pounds! Your champion is Scott Kingman! Man, he's finally the bell of the ball. <laughs> wow! This tournament probably didn't play out how Cody would have liked it to. You know, it's it's really so funny how how bass fishing is. You know, certain seasons like 2014. I mean, every decision I made, I'd went out there and it worked. I got second angler of the year, and every time I I went to a lake or moved to a spot, I would catch him. <laughs> Honestly, I couldn't do anything wrong. And look what I found. I mean, for instance, I, I, Sam Rayburn, I ran across the lake, I put the troll motor down with five minutes ago and I caught a six pounder. I mean, those, those decisions were, were you know, spot on that year. To be honest, I thought, hey, it's always gonna be like that. My decisions are just, you're, they're at their peak. I'm gonna be able to do this. Now, it's, it's not like that. You know, because of course you're gonna have bad tournaments. And he always calls me and he goes, oh, he's always worried that he's gonna disappoint me, he says. Like, I just hope you're not disappointed in me. I'm like, I'm never gonna be, I'm so proud of you. Like, it's so hard and it's just fishing, you know? I'm kind of in a rut this year. You know, I finished 58th and then 68th and what am I doing? Where, how can I get back to that point? And you, and you really, to be honest, I don't really know how you get back to that point. It's a live animal. You're not always going to be able to catch them. If I had the answer, I'd bottle that thing up and I would sell it for a million dollars. But I'm just, I'm like, all I want him to do is to try his best and that's all you can do and I'm proud of you no matter what the outcome is. But there are a few positive things to take away from it. The first being he got a $10,000 check. His first big check of the season. Getting a big check is gonna be the confidence we need to uh, to finish off this year strong, and hopefully this is the first uh, $10,000 check, uh, and then we can finish off getting three more. And the second is though he fell in the tournament results from day one and two, he actually managed to move up in the Angler of the Year standings. He went from 50th before this tournament to 42nd now, which has him climbing closer to that 35 cut to make the Forestwood Cup got to make the Forcewood Cup. That's our goal. I don't ever want to miss one. <clears throat> I've been very fortunate to this point to not miss one. So it really sucked to, to not be there. And you know, that's, uh, that's why you got to keep your head in the game for sure.
I always tell him, you know I love you no matter what, even if you get dead last. So don't worry, like don't put stress, because Cody does, and I'm sure all the fishermen do, they put a lot of stress on themselves. Like they're worried they're gonna fail, but it's like, I always tell them, you're not, there's no way you can fail. You're, you're a winner no matter what, and if you do win, then you're just gaining something, you know, extra. <laughs> More money for me to spend.